let's make some messages now. We'll start by firing up a server, so I already have it running. Let me just control C it. So as I mentioned briefly before, I have Rails alias I can grab here. See here, alias R equals Rails. So I can either do Rails S, do Rails server. This is the same as Rails S, which on my system is the same as RS. We'll just type it all out for now. Just a reminder, if you're using the Cloud IDE, it's uh, Rails server dash B dollar sign IP dash P dollar sign port, as shown in the written tutorial. All right, let's take a look at the locally running app. Here it is. And I'm going to sign out. This is what you'll see when you fire it up. Go to localhost. Go to here, localhost 3000. And it forwards to the login page here. And I'm going to log in as Alice. And the password, if you look in the seeds file, you can see it here. This comes for free from the seeds. You can see that uh, when we ran Rails DB seed, it loaded uh, Alice and Bob from the seeds.rb file. So you can hear it's in DB seeds. And it gave Alice the password Wonderland, and then Bob the extremely not secure password, ASDF, ASDF. Actually, these are both terrible passwords for real passwords, but they're fine for just uh, demonstration purposes. So this is Alice and then Wonderland and I'll log in. Now this application here, this uh, base app, doesn't include anything like uh, all of the functionality you would need for a real app just to keep things simple. So for example, there's no way to register a new user but if you're doing this tutorial then uh, that should be within your capabilities and it's covered among other places in the Ruby and Rails tutorial. But it's just a lot of overhead for something that's just meant to show off Action Cable. All right, this is the initial chat window. And uh, let's do something like this. So you notice I hit return just out of habit there. It didn't work, but we'll fix that up in this tutorial. So let's click send. And look at that, it worked. Let's log in as Bob. Login is Bob. Sure, let's save it. All right, we can see here Alice's message appears, and so Bob can say, "Hi, yes, I'm here." And then Bob hits send. But notice what happens over here: the message doesn't appear for Alice. If there were a polling solution, there would be some JavaScript running in this app that would call up to the server and say, hey, are there any new messages? But as mentioned before, that's not an ideal solution. Among other things, if you have lots of people chatting, you're hitting the server every time, every time it polls, which is potentially very inefficient. But what we have to do here is refresh the browser. Alice sends a message. It appears for her. Now it appears for her because there's a request going up to the server and then it's refreshing the page, just like a normal post request. That's what this is. This is a post request from uh, this form. But then there's no way for Bob to get the message. Same thing that happened with Alice. If you refresh, now it appears. So this works, but obviously this is way too cumbersome for a real chat app. So in order to make a real chat app, what we're going to do is use Action Cable to implement a WebSocket solution so that new messages appear immediately for all users.